Even though photography was invented in Europe in 1839, the best color photographer in the 19th century was in Japan. Kinbei Kusakabe, born in Yamanashi, Japan in 1841. He's a pioneer of Japanese color photography. Today, I'm gonna share his story and work. In 1854, after over 250 years of the strict isolation policy, Japan started to open up to foreign countries because the US Commodore Perry forced Japan to open its port with his equipped ships. Since then, Japan started to accept Western cultures and photography was one of them. Kimbei was born in 1841, when in the middle of a drastic shift from the samurai era to the western-style imperial era in Yamanashi prefecture. At the age of 16, he left his hometown to work at the studio of Veris Piero, who was an Italian-British photographer who worked in Japan for about 20 years. His studio was in Yokohama, which had a huge port. After the opening of Japan, Yokohama became a center of new industry, and 90% of Japanese photography was exported from there. Piero took Japanese culture seriously and photographed people to show how Japanese culture was to Western people. Since Japan was strictly isolated for a long time, Piero's photography was one of the few ways to know about it. It must have been quite refreshing and shocking for Westerners. He was known for his hand-colored photography. He applied Japanese watercolor, which came from ukiyo-e, which is a Japanese traditional painting style. It's a mix of Japanese and Western culture. His style influenced many Japanese photographers in Yokohama and created the trend of Yokohama photography, which became popular as a souvenir for foreigners. Kimbei worked there as a colorist and assistant to him. His trained by Biero and cultivated the fundamental of his career at Biero's studio. Piero left Japan in 1877, and after 17 years of work in his studio, Kimbei opened his own studio in Yokohama in 1881. He tried to capture vanishing Japanese culture because of influence from the West, and it was popular among foreigners as a souvenir. At that time, Japanese women already started to prefer Western-style fashion and hairstyles, even though he wanted to capture their traditional style. It says how we accept foreign culture and make it our original. That's what we are still good at today. He hired geisha for his photography. There are two main reasons for this. The one is that the realistic depiction of a woman body was considered too sensual and inappropriate. On the other hand, there was a superstition of being photographed. Some people thought photography would steal the model's lifeblood. But geisha were more comfortable to be in front of the camera than other women. He applied bijinga, which is a genre of ukiyo-e as a reference to composed women portraits. Bijin means beautiful women. Ga means painting. From his photos, we can see many influences from Bijinga, composition-wise and color-wise. He captured their traditional style really well with his nicely saturated coloring. You can easily imagine how Western people like his work as a souvenir.
other than Beijing influenced women's portraits, he depicted typical Japanese life at his studio. This is a fireman. He holds a canister aloft in one hand and a small axe in the other. You can see a pilgrim here. There is famous Mount Fuji in the background. As he holds a stick, he might be going to go up the mountain. And this background was used in another image. There are two sumo wrestlers and a referee behind them. They look way skinnier than sumo wrestlers today. I guess sumo was the most popular sport at that time, but Japan was getting influenced by Western culture, and sports were no exception. Today, sumo still has a traditional existence, but nobody would say it's the most popular sport in Japan anymore, since we have soccer, baseball, basketball, etc. And photos of the samurai were another popular souvenir for foreigners. Because of the huge shift in Japan, the government prohibited the samurai from wearing swords, which means they might be just models or former samurai in costumes. Which means how he photographed the samurai is technically the same as how we would photograph the samurai in a samurai theme park in Kyoto today, ironically. Come to think of it, they don't look like authentic samurai soldiers. And other than the studio work, he was known for his landscape and street photography. You can imagine 19th century Japanese life from his work. His photos are very well composed, and of course, the color is so beautiful. This is a geisha house. Here you can see the board in English. It's a photo of Jōzōji. Six of 15 Tokugawa shoguns are buried here, but most of the buildings were collapsed by air bombing during World War II. When I look at his color, it's quite saturated and if I pick one color, it seems unrealistic. But if I look at the whole image, somehow it's realistic enough. That's what I always try to do when I color grade my photos and videos. I never imagined there's a reference for that from the time of the beginning of color photography. And his photos make me feel so comfortable. It's something beyond just nostalgia. When we do street photography, we want some unique subject or movement to click a shutter. From his street photos, we can see that he already had that sense. Even though the history of photography had just started at that time, they already had the same mindset we have today. Maybe it's something universal in any arts, such as paintings, poetry, etc. And Kinbei got heavy influence from Japanese traditional art forms, so it might not be so difficult to develop his own photography style by combining them with photography. It's a mix of Western culture and Japanese culture. That's how we create modern, unique Japanese culture. 100 years later from the time Kinbei was active in photography, Japanese camera brands dominate the industry. Could he imagine that? <sighs>
新宿西口ヨドバシカメラ。